to bring life into this world is to bring about hope. Mm-hmm. And right now, there's not, not a lot of hope. hope. Nope. Nope. I hope you make it home safely. <laughs> <laughs> And if they're going to be with me for a short period of time and then not come back, mm -hmm. you could just you could see the tea leaves early. Hmm. Does that make you refrain from wanting to? How do you view your relationships with your clients? That's a good question. Okay, is that a question? Is that something you've ever thought about before? Um, I have questioned whether I not to, I've questioned whether or not my relationship would be deemed therapeutic in in a way that has been explained to us mm -hmm. in grad school and on TV and when people think about, you know, Freud and Erickson and what that looks like, I see my clients as the expert. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm coming into this space as an outsider looking in to connect dots that they don't see. Mm -hmm. But there's no there's not a hierarchy. Okay. With so, my clients. You don't come from a position of power when you're with your clients. You come from a position of trying to be as harmonious as possible, I think would be a good way to put it. A space of empowerment, right? So mm -hmm. there's things that I'm knowledgeable in in my field and having worked with a healer right yeah. there's things that i'm knowledgeable in but how that works for you mm -hmm. and how that may show up for you and how you implement it mm -hmm. is not something that i'm knowledgeable in because i'm not you okay would you say with your work as a doula remind me what the word is because i want to make sure we fertility doula. fertility doula have you ever had to sit separately with the husband or the baby daddy in this situation and say, hey, we need to talk about some things. Yes. What does that space look like? Does that ever feel like you're not infringing upon because you are there for the whole picture, but does the baby mother, baby mother or wife ever feel left out of the conversation when you have to sit down with him separately? No. Okay. No. And I... When I go in, I will say, just mm -hmm. like I would if I was doing couple therapy, there will be times where I meet with you separately. Yeah. Especially if I pick up on things that someone may be not saying because they're in this space and I'm I'm observing the dynamic between the two of you. Mm -hmm. But then I, I'm careful not to cross into that therapeutic realm. I have Mm -hmm. I, <clears throat> I have a referral list. I will refer you while I'm working with you in this in this capacity yeah. for you to have a individual therapist. Mm -hmm. And then there's sometimes, well, where I will say, mm -hmm. I don't know if this is where you need to begin because the dynamic between the two of you may not be the healthiest for you to conceive. Mm -hmm. And that's a hard conversation. Okay. But I would do a disservice if I take your money and not communicate to you what mm -hmm. I'm saying. Or at least make you aware of what of how big your trials may have to be between each other. Yeah. Is that ever heartbreaking for you? Yeah. Because you can see the desperation sometimes mm -hmm. and sometimes it's very rare that you see the desperation from the husband or the boyfriend mm -hmm. but the desperation in in either person that yeah. this is going to be the thing to bring us together mm -hmm. or this is what's going to fix it or this is what's going to fill my void mm -hmm. it is heartbreaking yeah well, damn. I I don't know if I could do it. <laughs> <laughs> now, just being honest, because it's like uh, I think in the work that we do mutually, like between you as a therapist and me as an advocate, 
advocating is understanding that the truth I have to say out loud may not be the popular opinion or it's the elephant in the room that you guys are avoiding, but your elephant isn't my elephant. So me saying it out loud doesn't mean you guys get closer to closure or closer to a solution, but it does at least acknowledge this is probably where your starting point's going to have to be when you do get help outside of me saying help looks good on you, but it's going to be a lot of work. Mm -hmm. So like as of late with a lot of the mental health events that we've been doing, especially in DC, when it comes to like the wellness and mental health space, I think the gray area is the most important thing that the community is supposed to handle because you guys as therapists aren't supposed to be the solution for all the things that are going on that are wrong. If anything, you're supposed to be a part of one of the gears that leads to accomplishing what better looks like for someone, but everyone defines better differently. So it's really what do they want for themselves or what have they not realized that they may want for themselves. And that's as a community either coming around that or us as a community acknowledging we don't want any parts of that <laughs> yeah that's why when people go to therapy sometimes people tell them they need to change and the folks around them don't actually want to be a part of the change even though they may be directly connected to the issue i know that all too well mm -hmm. and i preach that quite often <laughs> it's your turn green okay i'm such a nice person <laughs> Okay, you were a nice person. <laughs> Not gonna draw cards. Oh wow. Oh. You're still a nice person. You know, this is a deck that I haven't used in a very long time. That's a we're swapping hands. No color. <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to swap these hands. You're going to draw two more cards. <laughs> Here you go. That's you. That's me. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that's... Still got to pick a color. Yellow. Okay. I'm surprised that you wanted to switch hands with me, even though I had so many cards and you only had two. Well, your hands... Mm -hmm. have tended to get you a win so i don't i don't know if that's the right way to look at it but sure <laughs> I'll, take that. <laughs> I'll take that it's not it's not a bad description or breakdown of what's been going on here <clears throat> saw me um you just put the one and i drew a card yep okay. that's you but you may be on to something you good. All right. So, um, as a communicator and a content creator, and also a fertility doula, what does it mean to bring life into this world? Should I draw? Yes. Or be um, one of the facilitators. We don't have alcohol here. I just drew a card that says take a shot. I'm probably going to change that to something else. This must be from the party deck from when I went on that vacation a while back. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> That's a different kind of Uno. Uh, it's probably for my sister's birthday when we went out of town. But um, yeah, what does it mean to bring life into this world? To bring life into this world is to bring about hope. Mm -hmm. And right now, there's not, not a lot, a lot of, hope. of hope. Nope. Nope. I hope you make it home safely. <laughs> <laughs> That's all the hope we got for you right now. It is, it is really heavy right now. Blue. I'm not going to... We're just going to not acknowledge that okay. it's just a wild card. Yeah. Oh, that's ironic. 
<laughs> oh no. Oh, good job, you. Uh, oh, what a blunder. Can I do that? Oh no, out. <laughs> good job. You know what's funny? You want to know what my other move was? What? <laughs> you was guaranteed anyway. I was like, well, <laughs> ooh, oh, that's crazy. <laughs> oh, this wasn't going to be my day on that one. The hand switch paid off. It was a risk because we was drawing a lot of cards. But yeah, what does it mean to bring life into this world? Yeah. Hope. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a feeling you can't describe. And it's it's interesting because I'm mm -hmm. sitting here thinking because I've been Do I do I ask you questions that really make you think that you yeah. know you're here? Because I feel like our last interview was very similar to this where you was like, Man, that's a damn good question. But it's man. also things that I have mm -hmm. thought about in silence. Okay. With not sharing with anyone, like mm -hmm wanting to become a full spectrum doula what's a full spectrum doula so a full spectrum doula is from the rooter to the tutor mm -hmm. they help you conceive they're with you throughout your pregnancy mm -hmm. they're with you in the birthing space helping yeah. you birth um it's a postpartum doula mm -hmm. and in some trainings they even they even lump um death and um abortion doulas really yes so is abortion doula for when you have to go through the process of an abortion and what motherhood looks like on the other side of not being a mother after going through that process you are making a sad face so i assume it's something that's a very heavy process it is a heavy process whether you decide to do it or you're told medically it has to be done mm -hmm. Um, I think the feelings associated with that having to make that decision mm -hmm. um, are the same regardless of what the circumstances are What's the saddest situation you've come across as a doula, if you don't mind sharing that story? 